to you from the fourth quadrant of Earth's moon, joined as always by my best friends, uh, Allison and Chris. Allison, um, famed um, mug owner, impressive mug collection, Chris, window gazer. Here we are. Purpose of the show is to talk about things we know nothing of. Purpose of life, talk about things we know nothing of. Glad you joined us for this journey. No, true or false? I was going to say, true or false, how caffeinated are you? And I was like, that's... <laughs> true, true, yes! Not, not oh. the proper format. Um, I, I just want to take a second and say, I feel like I killed that intro, especially given I had, like, no prep whatsoever at all for the show. Forgot and, I, and, I, and I hit record before you, uh, before you expected me to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Really happy with that one. Probably no second top takes. five intros. I, yeah, top... How do we do that in binary? Top uh, those those improv classes one, are really paying off. <laughs> wait, zero one. Uh, top one zero one, I think, is five. That sounds accurate. I'm just gonna say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to um, and now we're down to like eleven percent. So oh, back to the seventeen. I don't know what Zoom's doing. Um, I used to know this guy. I mean, he's still around, so I guess I still do know him. I haven't spoken to him in a while. Um, that when you asked him questions, he would always reply with, well, who's going to tell you no? And that always made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Wait, he would say that instead of answering the question? Well, if you were like, hey, um, I'm wondering if I could... Um, uh, we get, he owned a restaurant, so like, hey, hey, is it possible for me to like, get a like I'll walk through the kitchen like next week. He was gonna tell you no. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Just like, so is that a... <laughs> but like, you could be like eating there too. You'd be like, can I substitute onion rings for fries? Who's gonna tell you no? I mean... <laughs> it's a really like passive comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like, it's so... It's, actually, now that I say it, it's great. Maybe I'll, no maybe I'll run actually over. said yes. Yeah. So... Right. I like active consent. <laughs> Maybe that's a, maybe that's a, maybe it was like a legal thing on his part, you know? Like, I never said yes. I never said yes. No. <laughs> Technically, I've never said yes. Yeah. It's not a legal thing. No, I don't think it was either. Um, it made me uncomfortable. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, with good reason. I, I think, I think that, uh, I think Allison's comment about consent is, is appropriate here. <laughs> Even in substitutions, <laughs> or if you should walk through the kitchen. <laughs> and there's always a mundane conversation. I don't think I ever had a serious conversation with him. He doesn't yeah, but um, like I imagine I imagine that he would use that same comment in serious conversations. Oh yeah, yeah. If that's a thing you say, like that's a thing you say, you know? If you think it's a clever thing to say. And you say <laughs> you it, it all, all the time. time. Yeah. Like you don't that's not like a halfway thing you use. You're right. You're totally right. And <laughs> it is kind of a uh passively creepy. Hmm. Now I don't. Now I really feel like even more uncomfortable about it. <laughs> feeling, feeling like I need to sort this out this afternoon. Work through some things. <laughs> Just process. Yeah. Well. Yeah, there was a computer joke in there somewhere. <laughs> At an average of thirteen point three percent. So on that note. <laughs> on that note, yeah. I always I'm, lately I'm forgetting like I actually have a job of bringing something to the table. Wait, what's do we have a timer that shows how long we've been recording for? Uh, you have a timer. Six minutes and eighteen seconds. Dang! I mean, that was a blistering six minutes out of the gate. In a good how way. Yeah. In a okay. Good way. <laughs> We're like blistering, like I don't know, like the sun is blistering down on you, and you're just like, this is horrible. This is too much. And so I speaking of the sun. I am getting um, new sod in my yard, not today, but like soon. 
And so my side and, and guy pour it out your window. Um, well, I'm looking at the grass. My side guy came on Sunday and was like, I have to spray and kill the old stuff first. Like it's basically weeds. And then he'll come and he'll somehow magically remove that and then put down new sod. I'm not really clear on the process. Um, I replaced the side myself several years ago, but I just like scalped the lawn and sprayed it with Roundup. And then two weeks later, put, no, maybe not two weeks, a couple days later, put down like sod on top and watered the hell out of it. And that seemed to work uh, until I scalped it mowing. So I accidentally scalped the sod and that killed it. Um, anyway, like the sun now, it looks, my yard is starting to look very dead. Like it wasn't for several days. He did this on Sunday. I'm like, maybe he didn't put enough down or something, but it rained all day yesterday. And Ross's lawns are like really strong and green and mine looks like, like if you would a match on it, it would just like be gone. What if he's going to do that? Can we go back to the fact that you refer to this person as sod guy and and just substitute man for guy and turn him into some sort of superhero that goes around <laughs> planting? I will them. say, I will say, I, I'm like, I'm kind of a nerd about doing home repair stuff. So I was looking at what it would cost to buy pallets of sod. And then I looked on Craigslist to see like what, if I could find a better deal. And the price this guy was quoting, there were several guys. Um, there's lots of sod men. Yes, the sod men as they were, uh, uh, quoting like prices that were about like installed about the same price I could buy a pallet of sod for. And I'm thinking, I mean, if I could pay someone about the same amount and it would be installed, that's way less work. And I've installed sod once in my life. I know how to do it. I don't need to learn and I don't really have a hankering to do it again. Yes. So I send him a message um, and he calls back like in the evening and he's I mean, he's really excited about what he does. Um, I mean, which in, which, a like, that, in a way that you're not excited about, Sash. Totally. But I like I immediately knew like this this is the right guy. Like he's talking about all the stuff he's gonna do, and he's like, you know, you could just like, like when I'm done getting the soil prepped, you could eat it like a bowl of cereal. I'm okay. I mean, he was really excited about preparation for laying down. Like this is this is what he was born to do. So I am I'm kind of thrilled like to witness this i'm gonna have like a front row seat to him here with this crew like putting down it's gonna be i mean it's gonna be incredible you know we're talking like a world-class sod dude here so do you really install sod i i don't know i mean in the world of programming you do <laughs> yeah maybe in, maybe install maybe you just and npm install sod <laughs> it's not working <laughs> Throw a dash G in there, it's fine. <laughs> Make it global. <laughs> to go wow. back to Sod Man, what's Sod Man's like pain point? Like what's his Roundup. Yeah. Roundup is his is his kryptonite. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he didn't use Roundup. I'm pretty sure he used something else. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, because he said, Oh yeah, in two weeks it breaks down and is chemically gone. So when we come to lay the sod. Like there's no risk the sod will be damaged by the stuff I put down. Mm. Like, well, that sounds like magic, but okay. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, I believe everything else he told me at that point, so I wasn't about to start doubting him, you know? That's how I feel about most home repair stuff that I just opt out of. I'm like, no, oh, that's magic. You can go do that. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, I feel like if you can find that person for whatever that task is, then that is the right person to have to do that task. I, yeah, this is like the one I saved on my phone, right? When I, when so. I, um, when I called uh, around to get quotes to get uh, a garbage disposal replacement, um, the one, like I, I was doing it over Yelp and most people responded uh, through messages, which is what I reached out. One of them was like, you need to call like let me get you let me get the um let me get one of our guys to actually call you to actually to talk you through the options as opposed to sending it through me and like at you know being totally like communicating like messenger based i was like okay whatever like we can do this via text but if you want the guy to tell me well then that's, that's fine i'll have a conversation i just don't want to call because you know phones um so when he called he was he had the same sort of enthusiasm about like changing garbage disposals 
as yeah. as your sod guy like he he was like telling me all the different types he's like i don't use this is what everybody else uses and i don't use that and this one is like you know th there's this one that everybody has and then there's the one that's an upgrade of that but that one's crap and i have this one over here that nobody really uses but i use it and i'm gonna put it in my house and it's like you know, one, uh, like a full one horsepower and it's like, and it's going on and on. Like I, we get it for really cheap and I can get it. We could get it in for like, you know, 50 bucks more than you get the upgraded version of this thing for. So I was just like going on and on about like this particular, it was like, yeah, dude, sold, sold. You, you had me at, at, yeah, at. I, right, right, right. No one to quit. <laughs> that, that is the part for people that are excited <laughs> about what they're doing. Like you sold me, just stop. Like I, but they're I not viewing you. it as like the sales pitch. They're just like, this is when I get to talk to someone about it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only time that I get to give these details. Mike, Mike literally said like 10 minutes in his call. He's like, I, I should go. I know I'm boring you. And I didn't want to say yes. Cause I had to be like, yes, very much so. And I'm being polite, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about side. <laughs> Are we still talking about sod? I've become the sod guy. Yeah, you're, but you're oh. like sod guy once removed. So yeah, you're, you're son of sod guy. <laughs> son of sod guy. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know. You know what? Speaking of son of sod guy, uh, I guess today is the 50th anniversary of the Manson murders. So maybe that's oh. what's going on. Hmm. I should also look out my window for that. <laughs> August eighth. Okay. Yeah, I, I read a I read a thing in the in the paper a couple of days ago that was like talking about the 50th anniversary, and it was talk, it was interviewing the lawyer who put him in jail forever, uh, and basically talking about how that case, like he was a brand new, fresh face, just out of like law school, like three years out of law school, lawyer who prosecuted um, uh, Charles Manson, and then that became the defining trial of his career because he continued to go like over his entire career he went back and back and back to like go to like when when there were like parole hearings and stuff like no this guy needs to be locked up forever and ever and ever mm -hmm. have we ever talked about the drive-by shooting four houses down for me five years ago no 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 uh, we not talked about we? that I, I mean i guess we could there's now, a let's just shooting five down five houses down for me yes so several years ago is this the thing that happens in Jacksonville? I, at least once. Um, <laughs> so several years ago, I, um, I was in Las Vegas. This has very little to do with the story, but I have to back up to somewhere. And this seems like a hard spot. <laughs> and I caught the flu in Las Vegas. Is this Vegas. one of the, those trips, though, that you've taken the trip and you're, like, woefully underprepared for the weather of the place you're visiting? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's one of those, yes. I don't really? think I went to Vegas and went to Reno and then back to Vegas and home, but... Um, and you were unprepared for the weather, and you, did you go in the winter? Yeah, it was cold, yeah. It was like October, so it, it, was, okay. it was hot during the day yes. and it was cold, cold at night. Yeah, um, okay. I think it was during October. Yeah, it had to have been. So I, came, I caught the, I, I got the flu, and I'm like getting ready to board my plane back, and I booked the red eye back, and I'm getting ready to board my plane, and I'm like sitting there, and I'm like falling asleep like in the terminal, and I'm like shaking I'm so cold so i went and bought like it's vegas so of course there are like gift shops so i bought a uh a hoodie so it's las vegas in a really cheesy way and i just like in the seats waiting anyway i flew home um and i came home and i i was home for like three or four days and i like of course i got the family sick so everyone is miserable right and um we're sitting like in the living room we're all kind of spaced out and i noticed at the front like window our windows on either side of the door are, are they're translucent not transparent but i noticed like flashing lights and i walk out and there's like cop cars like four houses down from me there's two or three in front of this house and then there's like an ambulance like i don't know 100 feet from my front door and then there's police tape like across and there's a mailbox two houses down that's been knocked over and there's this car parked like Catty corner. I'm like, what is going on? And I'm still like miserable. So many people are like, what's happening? Well, apparently this car drove in and the guy that was driving it yelled something out the window at a dude whose sister he was dating. And then went to the end of the cul-de-sac and came back. And when he came back, the dude shot him like multiple times. Well, we heard the gunshots, but I didn't know that there were gunshots. I mean, I should at this point in Jacksonville know what gunshots sound like. Um, and so they made the, the, this is like a corner. So they made the corner and then the guy like, in 
as he was bleeding to death, I guess, like crashed into a mailbox and then stopped the car on the lawn of a house across the way. And they, the neighborhood was closed. Like nobody in this end of the neighborhood was allowed to leave, which was good because we weren't going anywhere. Um, but that was it, like police tape. And I mean, so the, they were the there driver, most of the night, like taking photos and all this kind of stuff. And So the driver of the vehicle was shot. Yeah, I guess it wasn't a drive-by shooting. Was a I was going to say, that's like shot. the opposite of a drive-by shooting. Wouldn't the opposite of a drive-by shooting be like driving by and like receiving bullets? Oh, that's what happened. That's, yeah. Okay, yes. well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we i'm sorry i've really ruined our pg rating today haven't i <laughs> i don't know if we ever had that we i don't, don't think that's ever locked rating. down <laughs> okay well might might have to mark this episode as explicit well, I, I i think i mark all episodes as explicit by default. just in case <laughs> it gives us the, the freedom <laughs> yeah 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 well there we are <laughs> I don't think this is necessarily the podcast that people are like, gather around, children. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to learn about Dyson Spheres. <laughs> it's time for another episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs> what fables and fairy tales will they let us know about this week? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's probably valid. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just don't know enough families. <laughs> No, I think I think you're accurate. I think I wouldn't. I mean, if if you, you all have families, if you're not gathering around listening to it, I feel like that's probably a sign. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily exclude my kids from listening to the show, but I wouldn't be like, hey, family, let's listen to 15 episodes of Binary <laughs> Jazz on our trip to California this week. Woohoo! What do you What do you think your kids' responses would be to it? Would they just be like? This is so boring. <laughs> that. Like five minutes and they'd be like, wait, how do you know these people? What are you even doing? <laughs> what are you even doing? Yeah. <laughs> There's <Yes>. no plot. <laughs> do you guys like sing or something or tell jokes? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> is, there, is there a story? Yeah. Are you going to tell you a keep, story? You, you gave an intro and said you were going to talk about something you didn't know anything about and you haven't known anything about anything you've talked about yet. I don't get it. There's no story arc. <laughs> Can we listen to the book? <laughs> yeah. That's brutal. The book um, is so much better than the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we we should we should one one time we should try and figure out how we can never mind. Let's get on the topic. How we can never mind? I was gonna suggest we can uh, we should do like a, a podcast episode that's like a choose your own adventure. But that seems like a ton of work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we I love that that seems like a ton of work. That seems like a ton of work, doesn't it? No, it does. But so is bringing a topic to the table every week. Which I don't do. If you'll take I know. I mean, I just, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the member that didn't realize it was Thursday today when Chris said good morning. So <laughs> let's, not, let's, let's put in perspective like the value I bring to the table here. I'm showing up. <laughs> you show up. No, that's good. That's, that's all we can ask for. <laughs> And, and and often you get. I think I've only flaked on one episode so far. Forgot it was Thursday and didn't even bother to like check into Slack. On time. <laughs> That's because so, you were living your best life. Which means, well, and we're above fifty episodes, right? Yes, we are. So I mean, my I'm like in the high nineties success rate for showing up. We're we're above, we're above <laughs> sixty four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like high school. I'm here. This is, is sixty six. <laughs> I think this is better than high school. It's so much better than high school. It is so much better than high school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I wasn't podcasting during high school. Wow. God. I mean, imagine if the internet was what it is now back then. I would be podcasting in high school. Yeah, yeah I, I would have too. I would have, I would have been. I had a zine in high school, so I totally would have been podcasting. Amazing. I started building a website with a friend in high school. We were going to build, we were going to do like an online comic and he was. I was going to do one of those two once upon a time. Yeah. It never happened. It was, uh, there's still time. The Adventures of Twinkie Fish. I don't know if it's relevant anymore. <laughs> you don't know if it strikes the chords that it once did. It certainly doesn't for me. Yeah. My, my zine started out, uh, my zine was called Damn Punk. Yeah. Uh, and it started out as, um, well, like I was taking a keyboarding class that year, um, like typing keyboarding. Yeah. Oh, that was like, wow, keyboarding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, and the, 
it was like there's I was in the second semester of the keyboarding class. The first semester, you actually do all the lessons and do it out of a book. Second semester, it's like you can write whatever the hell you want. We don't care, as long as you're, you know, not typing. Like key, as long as long as you're typing something. Um, so like me and a friend of mine would just like write random like, like left field like thoughts that came to mind, um, and like and that sort of became the beginnings because like we kept them and like well we should do something with these and so, um, yeah that that evolved into uh, damn punk. Nice. I mean, not just that, it was other things too, but that was one of the things. And then like, it's funny because you have a zine and then like, there's a whole zine culture and there's like a, there's like a zine of zines. So you can mm -hmm. submit your zine to the zine of zines and then your zine is reviewed and like listed and whatever. So then yeah. like, you, then if you do that, you start getting like bands from like random places like Baltimore sending you their, their music for free and you get to review them and that's kind of cool. Um, and so yeah for a couple of years i had i had I was getting like free music in the mail and free like vinyl uh singles and stuff i had a decidedly nerdier time in media in high school um have i told you our mascot was the sponger we talked about that no no and i'm sorry what what what, how have we been doing this show for so long and you don't know about my high school mascot i feel like this is like a defining feature of me please tell me I, it's a cool sponge down. It's, it's a person that dives for sponges. So I, I grew up in a city that was the sponge capital of the world before synthetic sponges were invented. Great. And so the Greeks resettled from Greece into Tarpon Springs, Florida, and dove in the Gulf of Mexico and harvested sponges. Ultimately, huge Greek population. Um, and uh, our high school mascot was the sponger. So it's a guy in a sponge diving suit wearing a helmet and how it has a knife stabbing a shark, because I guess holding a sponge wasn't really aggressive enough for a football logo on that thing. <laughs> um, right, so I was, I was a fighting sponger, and um, so our, uh, somebody decided that in the early days of the internet, we would start a, a uh, somebody knew someone that had a server. Uh, so we started SpongeNet, and there were like a dozen of us, no, not even, there were six of us or so that like, like ooh, let's play with HTML. Um, and ultimately, like the person that was hosting the site was like, oh, hey, here's a bunch of old AOL floppy disks. Um, you just need to punch a hole in the corner and you're set for life. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like each of us got a box of 500 floppy disks. Anyway, uh, SpongeNet. SpongeNet. Yeah. Yep, that's diabolical yep. now. Was it sponge.net or is it sponge.net? Oh, no, no, no. We did not have a top level domain because they were expensive back then. So it was like www2. Whatever the name of this company was, forward slash user, forward slash something, forward slash sponge dash net. I mean, it was like, and we didn't have FTP access. We dropped it on a floppy drive and sent it to some guy who eventually copied it onto the server. And it was like that waiting, like you would go to the one classroom that had an internet connection and reload and see like did they load it up load up the new stuff yet wow yeah it was wild this is the computer lab golly bunch of nerds we're not even going to get to today's topic yeah we are yeah, we're going to do it right now we're going to do it right now right yeah. now either that or here's your here's your choose your own adventure we can go to today's topic or we can push it back till next week and just skip to today's quiz Oh, there's a quiz. Okay. Well, then maybe we should skip today's quiz because before we do the quiz or maybe after the quiz, I don't know, probably before because the quiz will run late. Uh, we had some fan mail that I wanted to share with, with the, the collective. Um, and uh, like, so usually, um, usually all the binary jazz email that comes in is uh, filtered to spam because that's fairly legit. <laughs> But because this person is a frequent uh, questioner and, and frequent listener, I assume, uh, because she has submitted questions in the past, uh, this one came straight to my inbox. So I saw Binary Jazz contact and I saw, and it came to my inbox, it was like magic. And then I opened it up and like magic, it was more than a question. It was a whole legitimate fan letter. <clears throat> now I will prefix this by stating that because of my cyber stalker abilities, uh, I do know that this is a person that, Allison, you are 
uh, at least personally aware of or familiar with like in real life. So I, 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 and I understand and respect that this is not just coming randomly from somebody <laughs> in like uh, Slovakia or something. <laughs> right, so not a random civilian. Right. Um, but still, I'm still calling it legitimate fan mail uh, okay. because unprompted, uh, this is what shows up in my inbox from Danette. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, my laughter is a laughter of acknowledgement of, oh, Danette. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why I listen to binary jazz, she says. Allison, all caps. Because I love to hang out with Allison, and when I'm not hanging out with Allison, I still want to hang out with Allison. Along the way, I've also started to enjoy hanging out with Chris and Gary, too. I often listen while cooking and laughing at your jokes, but really, it's Allison. So yes. there's our, there's our uh, first fan letter. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge you, Allison, because if you were not here, we would not have a show like in both the actual context that uh, we do the show, but also in like the, the fact that there is a show at all is, <laughs> is mostly responsible to you. So Danette, we agree that is why she is here. And if you, since since Allison is here primarily because she was listener number one to the show before we had a show, if you want to be a guest on the show because you're like our biggest second biggest fan, uh, you're welcome to. You can also join Slack and hang out with us like in Slack time. Uh, and there's a link <laughs> on the website at binaryjazz.us. Uh, okay. So um, yeah. was <clears throat> I would love a guest. Yeah. That would be awesome. So if, if, if that's a thing, let us know. <laughs> uh, listener question, she said. Apparently we record on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Just a heads up, we record on Thursdays. <laughs> yeah, the, the, other, the other part of this is that she does submit a listener question, and it's a really, really good one. Uh, okay. Who would you like to see as the next guest on Under a Rock? Oh. Uh, Linus Torvalds. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, yeah. Because she wouldn't even, she wouldn't even understand the context after he told her who he was. Probably. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so, so for, for those of you who don't know who Linus Torvalds are, he's, he's the creator of the Linux operating system. Such um, a nerd. Such a yeah. nerd. So it's already and far down the nerd hole. But would you rec like, is that someone who, if you saw on the street, you would know? I would recognize him. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I wouldn't. I don't think I would. Re I would recognize his name. And if, if he, honestly, if he said his name is Linus, that would be the first place that my mind would go. Um, what, um, well, maybe I'm asking, uh, so he, he is known for being kind of like a, an asshole has been in the past um like and he recently had like a realization that he was an asshole and said he was going to try to do better <laughs> has anyone heard anything following up from that? His, his doing I, better is just him being quiet <laughs> no, well yes <laughs> well no he he, he took that like was, a hiatus like a yeah. month or something and then came back to actually being actively involved with like a allegedly i i i i heard about that i haven't seen like specific uh, things but i have heard sort of vaguely on the twitters that it is he he's legitimately trying so well he gets partial credit for that yeah point points for trying yeah uh who would be i feel like i would want to see i don't know i want to see someone like jeff goldblum but i feel like she would know who jeff goldblum is right, right. but maybe not i don't know uh yeah yeah like um who are we talking about recently uh that was like nick cage but not keanu reeves it, was that who we're talking no, about <laughs> yes well probably not keanu reeves um maybe like joss whedon or something or Ooh, that's a fun one or yeah <clears throat> Um, like Neil Patrick Katie, Katie, Harris. Sackoff, Katie Sackoff would be good. I like this question. It, it dovetails nicely with a question that um, Myolus has been asking me recently. Like, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world tomorrow, um, pick three people, right? The first time you do it, it's like, okay, 
But now, like the seventh or eighth or twenty seventh time he's asked, like I really try and find like really weird mixes, right? <laughs> like people that would be like, like an entertaining group to have together for whatever reason. I, so. Can we go? Do they have to still be alive? No, okay. that's the best part. They can okay. be dead. <laughs> um, and then, and then, the, and the qualifier is: that, Do you want them while they're d- dead or alive? Which I always pick <laughs> alive because I'm like, I don't necessarily want to eat lunch with a corpse. Like that's. <laughs> Feels very Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I feel like my three would be Ray Bradbury, David Bowie, and Tom Waits. Wow. David Bowie um, is definitely on my list, or has been on my list frequently, but then I like mixing David Bowie with, like, um, uh, Bill Nye. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that would just be something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, and then I always try and throw an astronaut in there. <laughs> so, because of course, like whatever astronaut I can think of, whose name I can think of that I haven't named recently. Um, Buzz Aldrin shows up a lot. Oh, okay. Oh, no, the countdown. Mostly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've gotten to nothing. <laughs> I, I think it was successful. <laughs> we, can so, do, we can do the quiz. The quiz or not quiz? Okay. Oh, yeah. So, Never. I have to preface this with. I thought I came up with like a really great quiz idea on my own. And then I was like, no problem. I'll just like Google some, some of the answers and clarifications. And then I found out someone made this quiz too and basically did all my work for me. So, so much for my clever idea, which is who said it? Lady Gaga or Lady Macbeth? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Wow. Wow, I like that. Yeah, that's so, cool. It's an actual quiz via Sparknotes, but yeah, anyway. Um, so it saved me a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. Um, so the first one is, so I'll say the quote and then you can guess Gaga or Macbeth, I guess. Okay. Wait, 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 I need to, I need to keep score. Oh, well. score. Yeah, it's important. It's important to keep score when there's competitive things between me and Gary. Okay, Gary. <laughs> Do we do we have like our our historical scores posted on the internet? No, no. I do post. Well, I do post. I beat you every time. I do (laughs) post the scores. I do post the scores in the show notes. On the individual. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Come to me in all your glamour and cruelty. Uh, Bank Beth. I yeah, Macbeth. Gaga. Oh, Chris, you were so confident you slayed my answer. Uh, hear my sinner's prayer. I am what I am. Macbeth. Gaga. Gaga. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Holy shit, I'm this is the hardest quiz you've brought to the table. I'm just going to keep going Macbeth because one of them is going to be Macbeth. <laughs> Say it again. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Macbeth. Macbeth. Uh, I am a soldier to my own emptiness. Gaga. I'm a what? Soldier. I'm a soldier. Oh. Uh, Gaga. Correct. Gaga. Uh, This is the very painting of your fear. Macbeth. Um, I'm just going to go with Gaga just because I need to earn a point over Gary. (laughs) Macbeth. Damn it. I had no idea. I think I figured I was going to use the same strategy you used, Chris, and just plow into it like I knew and <laughs> jump on. Now that I'm ahead, I just need to keep like trying to have you follow me. You know. <laughs> I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Macbeth. 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 All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this. Whoa. <laughs> Gaga. Uh, Macbeth. Macbeth. I felt like if it was Gaga, it would be a little bit uh, insensitive. <laughs> but Shakespeare yeah. didn't give a crap. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, in the most biblical sense, I am beyond repentance. Gaga. Gaga. Correct, Gaga. I shame to wear a heart so white. Uh, Macbeth. Macbeth. Correct. Uh, what's done is done. I, I mean, like, probably Gaga said that at some point. 
Yeah. But, but I, I feel like in, in the context of the quiz, probably it has older roots and probably they're Shakespearean. So I'm going to go with Macbeth. Macbeth. Yeah, yeah Macbeth. Correct. Yeah. Uh, now serve for the gods, earth serve for the stars. God, God. What? <laughs> I love how indignant you are, Carrie. <laughs> it's Gaga. Yeah. Uh, what did she say, Gary? Did you say <laughs> Gaga? Yeah, I did say Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you bring those daggers? Macbeth. Macbeth. Great. Uh, Although, Greece, like, I like to think of Gaga saying that at some point. <laughs> Why did you bring those daggers? <laughs> Just like it's you know, just randomly on the street. <laughs> TMZ says, <laughs> why did she bring all those daggers? Uh, greetings, Himeros, god of sexual desire, son of Aphrodite. Gaga. Macbeth. Gaga. Yes. <laughs> Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. Macbeth. Gaga. Macbeth. Damn it. <laughs> I am wind and hurricane, the stormy sky and rain. Gaga. Uh, yeah, Gaga. Correct. Uh, these flaws and starts and postures to true fear would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire. Macbeth. Yeah, I'll go Macbeth. Correct. And the final one, when Pontius comes to kill the king upon his throne, I'm ready for their stones. Uh, Gaga. Uh, I, my brain says Gaga, but in order to win, I need an extra point, so I'm gonna say Macbeth. It's Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little monster. It's a difficult... <laughs> A difficult quiz. <laughs> oh, hey, stop barking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, Gary, Gary wins by two. <sighs> I was trying to tie it up at the end, but yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I figured it actually probably was. Kind of <laughs> There's because Pon Pontius, because Pontius is a different play. Yeah. Yeah. That was the logic. Nice. Nice. <laughs> You don't think that there's like some galaxy crossover there? No, not <laughs> not not in most Shakespeare. Yeah. Oh, that'd make it a lot more interesting. What did I, I? I wasn't in a Shakespeare class in college, but someone I knew was, and they needed me to be something. Is it Othello? I don't know. I should find the video. Oh, the video, video footage. This video oh, yeah. Find that. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was something. It was something. No, a Shakespeare course was a requirement for my degree in university. It was required? Yeah. Wow. It was one of the pre, you had to take a certain number of pre-1800 credits and Shakespeare was one of the required ones. Because they didn't want you, I guess, to just like enjoy modern literature too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that does seem like a big risk, doesn't it? <laughs> like everything post-1900 is that exciting. <laughs> So um, I recently discovered that you can share uh, computer sound. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and I was I had this plan last night to um, to share computer sound, to like have like a sound effect when we're doing like uh, quiz emails, yeah, or or quiz that would be good too, um, but I, I wasn't prepared this morning. Um, so I'll need I'll need to figure that out uh, before the next the next show. Um, yeah, maybe we could even do like the intro live, like with the actual music or something. That would be shot. That'd Ooh, be, that's fancy. That'd be weird. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to respond to that. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at Binary Jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.